I'm at home and I decided I would scrap a bunch of guns that didn't really work or guns that I didn't want anymore. So I'm going to be taking apart that one, which is a combustion cannon. And I took apart the Harkonnen, which is gigantic. I had this gun that I made with Kevin last year in January and it broke but I fixed it last night. I put on a completely new trigger housing. Like this glove here at 60 PSI. It's pretty good. I just took off that and I'm going to modify it to fit this. That should look pretty cool. Also for the first time I decided to get hardwood. So I'll be making the new stock out of hardwood and hopefully that lasts a while. The handle is still made out of plywood. I cut down the chamber. It's almost the same volume as my new barrel, which is three, uh, about three eighths of an inch, I think, on the inside. It's aluminum, so it's my first metal barreled gun that I'm going to make. And it's going to be the first gun that has a T-piston on it that works this way. Lots of time spent trying to grind out this and figure out how I want to assemble it. The air outlet for the pilot actually points at your finger, and a way to fix that is by getting a trigger guard. There was already a trigger guard on this gun. It goes right here. So I'm thinking of putting a piece of wood on the end for that, and maybe even look into making some kind of pivoting, locking stock mech that can fold up just for looks, and because I've never done it before, it'd be fun to play around with. On this side, I want some kind of barrel support, so I'm going to figure out a way to attach this on here. What I'm thinking is having a piece, a strip of metal or plastic going across on both sides and being screwed in to both pieces of wood, and then put some kind of floating bracket thing out on the very far end so that I can have a support for the barrel. That's pretty much all I have to do left. Got a bunch of progress done. Here is the gun at the moment. This is the full length of the body without the barrel. Everything fits together really nicely. It has a decent weight. It can balance on its end if you set it down on something. Also this, foldable stock, pops out. Using one hand you can retract both parts and you can pop it out. Put this against your shoulder like so, ready to aim and shoot. I'm going to have a adapter of some sort. This is a one inch female. The idea of having a large opening here is you can stick a barrel in diagonally. So you can stick this in sideways, pull it all the way, and then screw it into this adapter. And the reason why I want this is so that I can have different size barrels, either smaller or larger up to one half of an inch. Then you take something like this, which is a male end cap, threaded end cap with a hole. The barrel slides right in there and if you thread this onto the female coupler that should keep the barrel somewhat centered. Not perfect but it's definitely more stable than not having that. You hold it pretty easily. The balance point is somewhere right here which is decent and this thing folds up. The balance point moves a little bit forward, but it's still right here on the air tank, which makes a really nice foregrip for your left hand. So you can fire, hip fire, or something, and pull that out, fire with it. There's some adjustments that must be made on here but we're getting real close to firing it. So we're gonna do our first test fires with this. It's already been checked for leaks. It's 100% foolproof. It's designed to have a new type of ammo I've never used. 
which are 3 8 inch foot long arrows made out of wood. Because the barrel is very small, it has a very small air tank. It's very easy to pressurize it quickly. Using any standard bike pump or air compressor, we can go ahead and try 80 PSI. So this is at 80 PSI. I'm going to be shooting at a cardboard box stuffed with a lot of cardboard. Three, two, one. Watch there. All right, let's try shooting this without the stock. In three, two, one. Ready in three, two, one. Three, two, one. So here's the target with the four arrows. We'll start from the first one. It went in about the same. So they're all about the same piercing power, I'd say. And they're not damaged at all. It's just cardboard, but they worked. So now we're going to do distance tests. So this should be about 100 PSI. Three, two, one. For dart number four, about 15 paces out, so somewhere between 40 and 50 feet. Let's see if we can hit it. I'm going to aim more horizontal. I don't think the projectile is going to be able to go that far. So, three, two, one. No, that didn't even go straight. The reason why I chose a smaller caliber this time is this gun was going to be designed to shoot arrows. But the smallest one I could find across several hardware stores was a bit large for arrows. I did do some test shooting with 3 8 inch arrows, which are really fat, and it kind of worked. They don't shoot very far, very straight, and it could just be the arrow design. What's cool though is if I want to switch back to a half inch PVC barrel, I just need a half inch PVC male adapter that attaches to the barrel. It'll slide through here but then it won't fit through the front end. Since this is threaded, you can take it out. You can actually get another end cap that's the same size, drill out a hole for the new barrel, and suddenly you have a new mount. It's that easy. Probably the third gun I've made that actually has wood, but this one has a finish on it. It's polished and buffed using homemade finish. Um, made of one part beeswax with three parts sesame oil. I didn't use olive oil because I couldn't find any in my house, so I just grabbed the next thing. And sesame oil made a nice light brown coloring on the wood. It has a T piston design. It's a classic design, and I have not made one of these yet. I do have a coaxial piston. I have made um, advanced combustion cannons, but I had not made a T piston. So that's cool, I got that to work. But if you just grab the back end, you can open it in one motion, so that's nice. This was also my first time designing a stock that was actually lower than the gun. Usually I just have a piece of wood that goes all the way straight back. Having this lowered down makes it a lot easier to aim because the gun is, the barrel is higher up. It's better in line with your eyes. So when you're firing, you can aim better. Yeah, this is, it's a nice design. It's took three days to build. This is my fourth day, and I just had to finish up things like testing out the ammo and making sure it can shoot and stuff, but sadly I can't because it's raining and stuff, and tomorrow I go back to university, so I can't bring this with me because that would be illegal. So, no, no good shooting footage, but I'll see what I can do for compiling a video. So that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed looking at this. I will be posting more things in the future, hopefully. So this is a very brief explanation on what a T-piston design is for anyone who doesn't do air guns and sputting and stuff. So this is called a T-piston because it is in a T-formation and it has a piston inside. So the T 
the T formation is really cool because you can make it really small. If you do something that's coaxial, which is when one thing is inside of another, for instance, your barrel would be inside of your chamber. Um, if you have a barrel this large, your chamber would have to be larger to have air inside of it. And if you wanted to have your chamber smaller, you can't because it physically wouldn't fit. So with this design, your chamber, your barrel can all be the same size. The piston, the way this works is the piston slides on a tube that's in here. So the piston slides back and forth and it has a rubber face on the front. In here, there's a small piece of pipe that goes all the way from here into the halfway point. And when you pump air through the back, through this valve, using a bike pump, air compressor, or whatever, it pushes the piston forward and it slams it against the pipe. Because there's a rubber face, it seals that pipe and air can't flow out. So what happens now? Air just flows in. It just keeps flowing in, the pressure builds. Now, the piston isn't 100% sealed around the tube that it slides in, so little tiny bits of air can slide past it and they go down into here. They can't go out the front because there's rubber sealing it. It can go through here though because it's just plastic on plastic and it's not sealed with o-rings or anything. So the air flows into here, pressure builds up. Okay, so that's how you prime it. Now when you fire, you have this right here the trigger. It's simply a valve off of a air compressor and it's mounted into the gun so that it works like a gun trigger. You can see it's connected right here and this is what's called the pilot valve. So when you pull this trigger you let air flow out. Okay, so you just compress the air now you're letting the air flow out. Why would you do that? The piston is right here and it's very 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 tightly well fit into the tube that it slides into but it's just, it's not 100% perfect. That's why air can go in. However, it fits so well that if you release air out of this side, this starts to become negative pressure while this is still a very high positive pressure. Not necessarily negative, it's just that this is lower than this. Because there's higher pressure on this side, it's gonna want to flow that way and what happens is it grabs onto the piston and it pulls it this way. It pulls the whole piston backwards because it creates a kind of vacuum effect back here. When the piston slides back just a little bit, suddenly the difference between this and this doesn't matter anymore because the difference between this and the open barrel is even greater. So now the air inside this chamber that's pressurized really wants to get out to where there's absolutely no pressure at all, where it's zero pressure outside the gun. Technically, it's 14 PSI atmospheric pressure. So, as soon as the piston starts to go backwards from this vacuum that's formed, this pressure starts flowing in through here very fast, and it slams the piston back to get it out of the way. It just knocks it all the way back into the gun, and all of this air flows out very, very fast. This piston design is better than using like a trigger like this, or using a ball valve that you um, that you turn 90 degrees because those open very slowly. This gun uses the pressure that's stored inside of it to open itself. It opens very, very fast. It, it's a pretty cool design. It works very well. The biggest issue I have with this is the piston slams back. If it hits too hard and there's not enough dampening in here, it could potentially break the plastic on the back or send chunks flying out of the gun in a worst case scenario and because you put your face right here behind the gun when you're aiming it, those chunks will fly at your face. I don't think that would happen though. This is a well-built gun and there is dampening inside of it in the form of rubber. That's how a T-piston gun works.